All right, it's January 30th, 2019, and welcome to this weather update. And when the day started off beautiful, we had blue skies and sunshine. And then uh, toward the early afternoon, we started seeing some clouds approaching. Uh, and this was the Arctic front that was coming through. Uh, some images that I took here uh, as it was passing through us, I was riding the train. Uh, and then uh, a little later on, uh, the, the real heart of the Arctic front came through. The clouds started building and dark clouds started building. You can see here some radar images uh, as it was moving through around 4 o'clock. Uh, and then to show you the difference, all right, so when it first started, this was the visibility. All right, you could see, you could see pretty far, uh, you know, maybe a, a mile, and then no visibility at all, just like that. So let's get to the weather update and talk about today's crazy day. All right, so let's take a look and see what's going on across our area. So um, this was earlier today, the high-resolution satellite image, and you could see we had some clear skies uh, for these. Uh, you could see here, uh, not really going to show up too well. You could sort of see the Arctic front right here with the snow squalls right here. Uh, take a look at the satellite. Here's the GOES satellite. We'll look at the GOES satellite. Uh, image and you can see here. I'll make this a little larger so you can see because it's annoying that they don't let you zoom in on this so we have to have to do it this way. It's annoying because the uh, Unisys really was a great site to look at the satellite imagery. I like that site. It was simple and easy to use. But anyway, uh, you can see here is the Arctic front very rapidly moving offshore and in its wake we have nothing but clear skies across our area. Uh, so that's some good news. Uh, and if I can, I just want to make this, uh, let's make this, let's see if we can get 60 images in the loop here. And uh, we're going to make this loop a little longer so you can see the Arctic front as it passed through. Let's see if we can, may have to go back a little more. Yeah, we got to go back a little more than that. All right, so let's go to, we'll go to the maximum, 96 frames on the satellite. So let's take a look at this and see. You can see the Arctic front. There it is. There it is approaching as nightfall goes. There it goes. So uh, again, we started off clear, um, but then as you see here, we'll start it over. You can see here comes the Arctic front coming right through. You can see it right there. Uh, pretty amazing, uh, that frontal passage, that's for sure. Anyway, let's take a look and see what's going on across our area regarding regarding temperature. All right, you know what? I've got to make this. All right, now we're back down to 100 again. All right. Hang on a minute. Let me just, because what it's going to do is it's going to remember the... Yeah, it's going to remember the size. i got to put this back to the regular. All right, we'll go back to Ventus Sky. And we'll take a look and see what's going on in regards to temperatures across our area. So uh, you see temperatures are already dropping really quickly across our area, quickly into the teens. We still have some really strong wind chills going on right now. Uh, and off to our west there below zero. Uh, we may see some below zero readings not too far from New York City by this morning perhaps uh, and by by zooming out we'll uh, be able to see this uh, deep freeze here now the core of the Arctic air is over Chicago where it is 19 to 18 below zero these are some of the historically coldest temperatures they've ever seen in a very long time in here We're talking 20 30 below zero this is really cold it's so cold that antifreeze freezes that's how cold it is so it a lot of challenges for people uh, even just getting around in these in these conditions. Just imagine, this could have been us. This could have been us had the trough been placed differently. And uh, I really kind of was hoping it would be because that would have really finished off all those <clears throat> pesky beetles and stuff like that. So let's take a look at the current observations across our area. And I want to take, show you the uh, front and the storm reports. Uh, right now we're at 10 degrees already at Farmingdale. West wind at 24, gusting to 36. The wind chill is negative 10. So really very, very cold air outside right now. Uh, and by morning it's going to drop even colder than that. Uh, and I want to just want to show you when you look at the observations here and show you the Arctic front passing through here. It was 33 and then when the Arctic front passed through the temperature dropped 11 degrees like instantaneously and I felt it when those snow squalls moved through you could feel the temperature drop almost instantaneously alright uh, and uh, it's pretty it's pretty amazing drop in, in temperature actually uh, and uh, let's see Central Park probably had a similar drop uh, 10 degrees as well there and they went from 32 to 20, not quite as dramatic, 
uh, as as Farmingdale because it's the city and it takes a little longer to cool off. Let's see what uh, the observation is at uh, Gabreski Airport. So it's 14 degrees there, and when the front passed through you, they went from 32 to 24. So it's uh, it's pretty impressive, you know, pretty impressive. We'll look at Islip. Uh, and see, there are 11 degrees, west wind at 22, gusting to 39. Let's see what they have. So they went from 33 to 24 when the front passed. So it was a really rapid drop. You can see how rapid the temperatures are dropping and how fast this, this Arctic air is moving in. Uh, for a winter that hasn't, ha hasn't had a tremendous amount of storms, you know, whenever we've gotten the cold air, it's been really cold air. So it's 11 degrees in Tom's River. And the temperature there when the front went moved through dropped from 34 to 25. So very impressive. And then we've got some storm reports we got to go through. So let's go through those. Uh, the latest wind reports. Let's take a look at some of these wind gusts when this Arctic front moved through with the snow squalls. Uh, some fairly remarkable wind gusts, uh, mainly in the mid 40s. But uh, in Union County, Newark Ac Airport actually did get a wind gust up to 51. Um, in, oh my gosh, look at this, in Bayville. All right, we're going to have to make this larger because I want you to see this. 63 miles an hour with the Arctic front. 63 miles an hour. That's a tremendous amount of wind there. And I, I know, I was out in it. And oh my, we've got even more over here. Look at this. So um, look at some of these readings here. Sun Suffolk County, Eaton's next, 64 mile an hour wind gust. Yeah, and they they have a blackout over there right now. Well, maybe it's fixed by now, but I was looking at the power outage map, and there was major power outage in that whole area. Great Gull Island, 63. So this definitely caused some power outages when these winds move through. East Murchis Coast Guard, 59 mile an hour. Shinnecock, uh, 57. Fishers Island, 56 mile an hour wind gust. Uh, one mile south of Brookhaven, 53. So we have some really strong wind gusts when this moved through. Uh, and uh, really very impressive. Very impressive. So I had to show you that. That is incredible. Uh, that is incredible. It was like a, a squall line, but with snow. Uh, there was no lightning. I didn't hear any lightning or see any thunder. Uh, but uh, Or hear any lightning. I mean, I didn't hear any thunder or see any lightning. But uh, very impressive. So here are some of the storm reports. Again, that wind gust. Uh, at uh, Eaton's Neck at 64 miles an hour. Most of these are just wind gusts. I don't, I don't know. And there's a tree down on Main Street at the Great River East Islip border. I'm going to show you some uh, observations from the worst of where the cold air is right now. And in Chicago right now it is 14 below zero. The wind is west at 14 gusting to 25. And the wind chill, negative 37 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, when the wind chill or the air, t whatever temperature gets below to negative 40, the temperatures between Fahrenheit and Celsius are almost exactly the same. So you see that right there. And look at the dew point. It's tw the dew point is 24 below zero. This is extremely dry air as well as extremely cold air. This is right out of the Arctic Circle, which is, which is insane. Uh, and uh, we're going to change this now to Minneapolis. And uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. All right, we can do Minneapolis Airport. I'll we'll do this one. Uh, and there it's negative 18. All right, so very cold temperature, air temperatures. Dew point negative 26. So, uh, you know, we're not seeing that kind of uh, um, chill, but we will see very low dew points uh, when, we, when we take a look at, at the observations. In fact, I think if we look at some of the dew points right now, they're already very low. Let's see. Yeah, we're dew point, our dew point is negative 16 at Farmingdale. Negative 16 degree dew point. So we're dealing with extremely dry air as well. And the temperature has just dropped to 9 degrees. So let's now take a look at the models. No, I'm not going to look at the long range. we got to get through this Arctic outbreak first. And then we can talk about the warm-up next week uh, in a couple of days. we got to talk about how cold it's going to get. Uh, you can see here, uh, we're not going to really be having any precipitation for tomorrow. But there could be some across the forks, some clouds and flurries perhaps, and maybe snow, sh sh snow showers because you got this really cold air over that warm water. Uh, and then uh, and tomorrow, Friday, uh, we're going to have some uh, light precipitation moving over Jersey. But again, nothing really to be concerned about with precipitation. The main thing is going to be the cold. Uh, now we can look at the sky conditions. And we're going to have a clear day tomorrow. Despite the chill, I think we're going to have a clear day. 
across most of the area except for the e Twin Forks where you're going to have some of the Twin Forks, the Cape, uh, maybe some um, ocean effect uh, and Long Island Sound effect, snow showers and cloudiness. But across um, New Jersey should be clear, across most of Long Island, west of Riverhead, it should be clear as well. And we go into Friday, we start seeing some more clouds. But uh, I think that we're going to have a very, very cold overnight without, with the light winds uh, and the dry air in place for, uh, uh, for uh, tomorrow night. That's Thursday night and Friday morning. Uh, I think that there are going to be some readings near, near or possibly below zero in the Pine Barrens if there's really good radiational cooling. But you can see clouds increase on Friday, and then we have more clouds again. And I think the same thing for the weekend as we go into Saturday. Um, and if we look at the NAM model, it's going to be the same deal with the, with that as well. So uh, but you can see Thursday. Oh, this is you know, got to go to the T&Z. You can see here that Thursday will be clear across most of the area. So we're going to have a nice clear sky despite it being very cold. The good thing is the winds do drop off as we go into uh, into uh, now this model seems to keep a lot more of those clouds away from us on Friday so we might have some more sunshine according to this model uh, but it really is all about the temperatures so let's go and look at the temperatures shall we and we'll start looking at the NAM air temperature so uh, the NAM is always on the colder end of things so by Thursday morning we are around zero perhaps around zero uh, in our area around zero in New York City, Long Island, and New Jersey very well at least if not that around uh, you know between zero and five above all right uh, and then for the day the sun comes out we'll have clear skies but temperatures are only going to reach the mid teens that's that's as far as it's going uh, and then uh, and then it gets very very cold for the evening of course this doesn't show up the radiational cooling but I have a feeling that if the skies stay mostly clear especially in the you know in the Pine Barrens uh, in West Hampton that could go to, down to below zero, which will be good. You know we need all the cold we can get in the Pine Barrens, and then for Friday it goes into the low 20s. That's as far as it's going on Friday, so it's still going to be cold on Friday. Um, and we're not going to start seeing a more moderation until the weekend on the, on the of this Arctic air. And if we look at these these dew points, you'll see the dew points also very very low. Uh, we have very low dew points. Uh, ranging from negative 10 to negative 20 is extremely dry air very very dry air in fact so a lot of people don't think about it but in this weather despite the cold because the air is so dry fires actually can spread very rapidly uh, because of the extremely dry air in place uh, but that is that extremely dry air also brings us very nice skies as well so now we'll change it to we'll look at the winds just to show you the winds here uh, oh, that's not the right one. Uh, this is the right one. Just show you the winds. They should the winds will back off. You see, there aren't really there aren't really very strong winds coming, especially by tomorrow afternoon. Winds will be much lighter. Right now, it's really brutal because the wind chills are much higher. Uh, wind chill, you could see much higher winds as we go toward tonight. Uh, but when we go into tomorrow, you see the winds back off quite a bit. All right, so I'll just change it to the GFS model, and we can look at the temperatures on that. Uh, show you where those temperatures are going to be here on the GFS so uh, again and I'll go a little uh, more toward the weekend to show you the warm-up so again we go into Thursday morning we see we are in the single digits around zero and then we go back into the mid-teens all right and uh, I expect there to be a lot of problems on the trains and uh, all over the place tomorrow because due to this extreme cold so allow extra time to travel uh, Friday you see it recovers get up to 20 uh, and then uh, by the weekend we start recovering into the low 30s on Saturday and then Sunday uh, uh, we recover up to the 40s and then there's going to be a warm up next week you can see it actually could get quite mild especially on Tuesday uh, so uh, we'll have to keep our eye on that and it looks like more cold air tries to get in like I said I really don't want to go over the long range I really we have to deal with this this extremely bitterly cold arctic outbreak right now that we are dealing with so I'll just take you back to Ventu Sky just to show you a few more things. This is gonna what it's gonna look like at seven in the morning tomorrow, Thursday, and you can see look at the negative forty, negative thirty-five, all throughout Chicago. Uh, it's gonna be this is gonna be really frigid air uh, in these areas here, and it's not the middle of nowhere. These are so Chicago, Milwaukee, uh, Minneapolis, all sizable cities that are gonna be dealing with this, and there's gonna be a lot of problems as a result of all that. 
the really bitterly cold air. As far as our area, we're going to have single digits to around zero, probably, and the winds back off. You can see the winds aren't moving as fast already, even by seven. Uh, so that's that's good because the wind chill is really what makes it bad. But I want to just zoom out and show you where this air is coming from and take a look at this. So uh, let's show you uh, this this air literally is coming right out of the Arctic. So we'll zoom out, go into a really long view. You can see this air is coming right out of the Arctic Circle, right down, straight down. This is such a deep trough that it's just digging down here. It's very unusual to have it such a deep deep trough uh, but you can see uh, it's actually going to be colder in, in many places in the in the eastern half of the country than it is in Alaska so that's how crazy it is uh, that's how deep this plunge this plunge of Arctic air is and uh, it's even going to be cold in parts of uh, the southeast too as well uh, it's, it's just very impressive to see this uh, and one more thing I want to look at is the snow cover actually we're going to look at a snow cover map uh, this really doesn't uh, show you what fell today, but we had a little bit, about almost an inch of snow, a coating to an inch. It's very slippery out there. That's the other thing that we have to talk about, is it's very slippery because there's like a coating of snow on the ground, and uh, there's a lot of ice beneath it, and it's very slippery walking around. So definitely be careful out there. It's unfortunate that this doesn't really show. Uh, there's, there's a little bit, you can see there's a little trace here of snow across our area here just a trace uh, but uh, anyway you've got to be careful walking around especially on the sidewalks and be careful driving around and stuff like that uh, but anyway uh, that is going to wrap up this weather update be careful out there it really is dangerously cold uh, but if the sun is shining and the sky is blue I will be in the pines no matter what so that's it take care thank you for watching